Hi, everybody. I wanted to uh, welcome you, everyone, to the webinar. I'm just uh, typing in here. Hi, everyone. You guys can just say hi. Hi, Susanna. Hey, Joe. How are you? I know you put Jor in the chat. I know it's you, Joe. You can't fake me out. Good try. Hi, Susan. Okay. That's good. We can hear every, everybody can hear me. Okay. Correct. If you can put in the chat line, sounds good or can hear you fine. Hi, Tim. Hi, Marcy. Okay. So Tim, you can hear me fine. Just as a check, <clears throat> our guest, I guess. There you go. Look at that. Uh, we'll get uh, Nate on uh, the same way so everybody can see Nate on screen and then everybody can hear Nate too, hopefully. Sounds good. Well, we're glad to be here, guys. And um, as John said, we're, we're Diamonds with John's organization. We've been um, working with him now for the past year and um, buying multifamily real estate. And everything we're going to share today and our friend Nate is going to be here with us from our home office. He's going to be sharing with you is all about how to make this better. And John's always looking for ways to give more value to his uh, clients. And uh, he invited us to come share with you today just to give you a little more than uh, he's been giving you. Um, and like he said, pirate real estate down in uh, Keys was awesome. It's our second time down there and hope many of you can make that in the future because that is a really unique time. And we had a lot of fun down there as, uh, as presenters and as participants as well. Well, cool. I'm going to have you, uh, if you, I got Nate all dialed in. He's a presenter now. He can, uh, we should be able to hear him no problem when, after you introduce him and talk about what we're, uh, we're all going to kind of learn over the next hour here. Okay. So, uh, Nate, are you there? I am here. Can you guys hear me? That's perfect. Nate, we can, that's loud and clear. That's awesome. Are you going to be too on too loud? Camera? I, no, I, I, I think I, I think I can, I can try to, um, please allow to enable your cam. Okay. Uh, close. You must have a microphone or headset cause you're loud and clear. That's great. Here we go. Yeah. I've got a, uh, one of those, uh, Yeti mics. Love it. Um, Love it. So it's, uh, hopefully it sounds good. We have a podcast that we do as well. Um, here we go. There we go. All right. Okay. So, so yeah, Nate, we can see you. We can hear you loud and clear. Okay. I guess, Marcy, we're going to turn it over to Nate to take over, correct? That is correct. And again, just um, so excited for you to hear what Nate has to share. And it, it's going to be awesome. Thank you, Nate, for being with us today. Oh, thank okay. you for bringing me in, Marcy. And I'm glad I can help. And John, we met uh, just last week for the first time, but I look forward to getting to know you more as well. And yeah, I know absolutely. Marcy has told you a little bit, John. I thought I could ask you about this whole system. What was your favorite thing about what we're going to teach today? I know she kind of told you a little bit about it, and I wanted to just hear your thoughts on it, and then I wanted to kind of tailor what we're going to discuss to that. And maybe let me know just exactly what you want your listeners to see from today. Well, I think um, first, I think what was interesting about that is, you know, I know what the wealthy do and the wealthy uh, take a dollar and they find ways to spend that dollar in ways in which that dollar gives back to them in several different ways. So I buy an apartment building with money. Those tenants are going to their nine to five to give me cash flow, not just once, but over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Um the other thing the rich do is they'll take $1 and they'll find ways to get paid from different sources from that same dollar. Um, it kind of like what we do with apartment buildings. Uh, we're going to find ways to have that apartment building cash flow. It could be a billboard on the side of the building. It could be the laundry room that provides us with laundry money, uh, the rents themselves and income themselves that itself. But what was so interesting about this is you could have a dollar work hard for you in several different ways. So that was what was exciting. And I think what 
what would be interesting for our listeners, as you put it, I feel like we're on a big time radio show here. That's cool. Right. <laughs> I had to make is, you feel good, John. Yeah. Is kind of a, a focus on apartment building investing with this and how this could be used in tandem uh, with that. Got it. Okay. And and you're exactly right. And Marcy, I, honestly, I couldn't really hear much of what you were saying. So I have no idea if you introduced me well or not, but I'm sure it was great. And uh, what I would say, though, just for starting is, and I don't know if Marcy even mentioned this as she was talking, but this is this whole concept is about banking. And John's the real estate guy. He knows exactly what you guys need to do in order to make money in the real estate world. He's been doing it a long time. The issue with banking, though, is not too many people have been introduced in how to make money in that world. John, you show people how to use banking to get real estate, but as there no no one's really making money in banking yet. They're just making money in real estate, um, and that's where their money's got to go. And if it's just sitting in the bank, then they can't do anything. So what we'd like to do, and as John said, is is a strategy that we call becoming your own banker that can allow you to leverage your money and make money in the real estate you want to, but also in the banking world as well, as Johnson making money in the same places or two different places with the same dollars. So that's exactly what I wanted to share. And I think we can go right in. I actually built a quick example for uh, making a, a real estate down payment and showing you exactly what it would look like to use the banking system that we teach instead of the traditional way of doing it. So hopefully that will kind of share some things with everybody and I'll keep it real short and simple. And I, John, do we open up to questions at this or is that, is that, you, you know, the great thing is you got total control. So you okay. want to open up the question. We'll just have them for right now. I'll put them in the chat line and um, sorry. Uh, and um, uh, I think that'll be the best way, at least for right now. So we can kind of control okay. the sound. And I'll and I'll do that at the end, I guess. I'll just go through everything and then and then at the end we'll we'll do questions and things like that. So I think I can show my desktop, I yep. believe. Okay, now it's telling me I've got to download uh the app. That's unfortunate. It doesn't take very long if you hit a download okay. button. I'm downloading it now. Okay. And what I thought we could do is is I would go in and uh go in and share a little bit about the premise behind the idea. We go in and show you how to use it in real estate and then pretty much just open up to questions for people as they, uh, as I'm sure they will come. So here we go. It's, it's downloading, opening, click run. Um, I'll just share a little. Can everybody hear me? It's real light, Marcy. And yeah, knock, knock Tim out of the way. Knock Tim out of the way. Okay, while, while that's downloading, I just wanted to let everybody know, um, Tim and I have started our first banking policy, and um, we put it into motion in December, and it's just been so much fun. When you see this process, um, we have uh, a GPS, it's called, that follows up with this banking product. And we're going to probably have uh, a house and also our real estate that we acquired with John, or he showed us how to, within three years. We should have everything paid off. So it's been really, really an amazing process. Okay. Nate, are you good? I think I'm having some issues here, guys. Um, I downloaded it, but it didn't uh, do anything. And I tried to do it again. Oh, here we go. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting somewhere. Sorry about that. Here we go. Wait, it's pulling something up. Hey, Nate, it looks like you're all set, bud. Am I? Okay. I didn't know. I, I got kicked out of the meeting for about 30 seconds and then I, <laughs> and I found my way back in. I don't know what just happened, but you can see my screen, right? It's really just a, a whiteboard right now. Correct. Yep, we can, yep, we can see okay. it. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I use it to draw on, and and so as I had said, and and you know, I thought today would be just a, a really simple time to go in and show you exactly as it's tailored to real estate. I don't know what Marcy and Tim had presented um, when they were down at the event, 
Um, so I don't exactly know if this will be in line with everything, but at least I could, um, it'll get the idea across exactly the way we want to. So this is how most individuals and you guys on the call here, I'm sure would agree that this is really how we do banking uh, right now is let's say we go out and we, we earn money from either rents or some, anyway, money that comes in has to go someplace. And for most of us, it is into just a conventional bank. So we go out and we make a deposit into a bank. I don't really care the number, but we're just going to to use the the number fifty thousand uh, dollars for the for our example. That's actually the I use that number because that is actually the number we're going to use as a down payment in our example to go buy a, a multifamily property. And so all I know is we built up some money. We have it in the bank, fifty thousand dollars, and we're actually going to sit here and pretend that we're back in the 90s. <laughs> and, uh, and the reason I say that is because we want to actually earn interest. Today, I know, you know, my savings account, checking account, it pays zero. There was a time when banks actually paid interest. So I, I use old, old fashioned numbers here. And we're going to assume they pay you some interest. We're just going to say it's 4% or something like that, uh, like they would back before quantitative easing hit and all the things and the interest rates were driven down, which is actually great for us real estate investors, honestly, for interest rates to be low. But Anyway, up until this point, many people, this deposit, I ask this question all the time everywhere I go, is this an asset or a liability to the bank? So, John, I guess you could answer, is this, is this deposit that you have at the bank, is that an asset or a liability to the bank? Um, well, to the bank, that would be, if you pay that $50,000 to the bank, they actually owe that to you, right? So They do. That would be a liability to them. You got it, John. That, and that's great. And most people would say it's an asset, um, but you're exactly right. It is a liability to them. Every deposit you have at a bank is actually a loan to a bank. That's really what it is. That's what it's classified as. You've made a loan to the bank. And back in the old days, they had to pay us interest on that. So it really is making a loan to a bank, essentially is what it is. And it's a liability. So deposits are liabilities to the bank. What are banks' assets then? Bank's asset would be like a mortgage uh, would be an asset, an example. You nailed it. For a bank. Yeah, you nailed it. Yeah, exactly. So we know that they've got to take our money. They got to pull it together, maybe with some other people's, or as you know, I'm sure with the fractional reserve lending system, they can just multiply your 50 grand into 500 grand <laughs> and send out a $500,000 loan just like that. But we know they do have to go out and lend this money out. Let's say they lend it out to somebody who wants to buy a house, just as you said, for a mortgage, and they're going to charge him 7% interest on the mortgage. So the bank goes out and takes our money. They make a loan to the guy who needs to buy a house at 7%. And that guy just went through the financial proctology exam that I'm sure everyone here has been through to get a mortgage. And all that whole thing is all about is pretty much just saying, I can repay the loan. So he starts making loan repayments back to the bank. So the bank actually gets all the money back and makes a profit on the mortgage. But what do you think they're going to do with all the money uh, that just came in from the mortgage? Uh, they're, they're going to lend it out again. Yeah, exactly. They're in other words, you, the same thing. They're, they're all, their business is they're in the money business. They just keep money moving 24-7, 365. So as this money comes in, they're saying, we're not going to let the money sit. We're going to go out and make another loan to someone who wants to buy a car, maybe charge them 8%. And he's got to do the same thing that the home guy's doing. He's got to start making payments back and they're going to get all the money back and make a profit on it. And they'll just simply do it again, maybe for a house remodel, something of that nature. Charge him 9% and he's got to send it back in. And lastly, we've got maybe a credit card or some debt consolidation or hard money or something like that at 12%. And uh, they've got to send it back into the bank. Up until this point, how much money has the bank actually put into the run their business thus far? Uh, to put in nothing. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> You're exactly right. So the, the bank hasn't put a dime into the gig, but yet who's making the majority of the profits? The bank. The bank is. And this is, this is the banking system that we live in or we've all been taught. 
is essentially and right now we're we're assuming you're making four percent right now it's much worse you're not making anything the we're putting we are already in the banking business we put all the money into the bank that the bank needs to run their business the only issue is is that though we put 100 percent of the money in we're making a very small portion of the profits that the bank actually makes right now it could be zero that would it seriously is like going into a real estate deal and having the real estate investor who's using your money let's say you pull together with other investors and you put you put all the money in and you get only your dollars back and they keep 100 percent of the profits you would never put your money into a deal like that but that is what we've been taught and that's what we've been really the, the only way we've seen banking is in that light. In fact, if I take the uh, 7% for the mortgage, I subtract out what they're paying you. That's 3%. 8 minus 4 is 4%. 9 minus 4 is 5%. 12 minus 4 is 8. So the bank actually went out and made 20%. And yet we made 4%. Or they made 16% more, or really they made five times what we made. So they made a 500% profit and they didn't have to put any money in the game. And this is actually the problem. And then as, as kind of what Marcy was saying, the issue isn't just that we're getting killed over here on our deposits, that we are having all our money for our real estate business and our just our operating business flow into bank accounts that they're using to make huge profits on. We're also probably the guy we we borrowed money to buy property. So we're paying them interest there. We might have a car loan. We might have just remodeled the house. And we might have some credit cards or hard money lending that needs to be paid. In other words, we're not only getting killed on the depositor side, we're also getting killed on the borrower side. And the banks, one way or another, is getting their hands on almost every dime that comes into your pocket. Either you're going to make a payment to them or you're going to make a deposit with them. They really don't care how the money comes in. It can come in as a deposit or as a payment. They know they're going to make out really well, especially with no money in the game. And this is really what we've all been taught to do. So that's why everyone is flying around trying to find some other investment. That's why John's here, because we got to get our money out of this system as quickly as we can, or else we're going to go broke or because <laughs> the money with inflation is just losing value sitting there. So we're always looking for places to put it, which really means that the only time these dollars, let's just use this $50,000 here, the only time that money will ever earn for you if it's, a, if it's sitting in some other asset. It's got to be sitting in some sort of asset. It's got to be made as a down payment. It's, it's got to be moving one way or another in order for it to make money, just like the bank. See, the bank can't let money sit and make money. It's got to move it. We as individuals are really the same. We have to constantly be moving it. And if we don't, we go, we don't make a dime. Well, what I'm trying to tell you, and really what John was saying about it is the rich are always trying to do multiple things with the same dollar. And all we're trying to help people see is that they can actually replace the bank here as much as possible and have the same dollars that you've already been using to purchase real estate or to buy cars or to go on, you know, on a, on a, on a sabbatical to Europe, whatever you really, whatever floats your boat, whatever money's being used for right now, that's been flowing into the bank. You can actually make money off that money just simply by changing your mentality and really your way of thinking about things and using a different tool. So our whole goal is if the, if this is really how banks are working, which it is, and they're making huge profits on us. And that's, what's amazing is you see these banks um, with low interest rates yet they still are some of the most profitable businesses in the world. That's because the interest rates to them really don't matter. In fact, many times people will understand that banks make more in low interest rate environments than in high interest rate environments because they don't have their cost of goods sold, if you will. The cost of this money that we just put in is practically nothing. So every single loan that they make is essentially free money that we've given them. And they're just not sharing anything of the profits with us, even though it's our money at work. So we got to find a new partner. And that's exactly what Marcy is saying, what they've built up. Um, and literally what we're trying to teach people how to do is change where you bank at, have the same goal, use the money for the same thing, but have a different flow through in order to make a lot more money and essentially have your money work in two different places. And the surprising fact is that high cash value life insurance can actually function as a bank. And it's an astonishing thing. I don't know if they told you this, John, who do you think is the biggest purchaser of whole life insurance in the world? 
probably the wealthy? Well, not not even just that. I, I, I use the word who. I guess I could have said what. Banks are the biggest purchasers of whole life insurance in the world. Bank of America right now has over $20 billion in cash values in life insurance policies. Wells Fargo has over $18 billion. So in other words, these big banks are stuffing their money in these policies. Do you think they're letting the money sit in these policies? Or do you think they're keeping it in motion just like they are every dollar that they have? Yeah, moving money for sure. Moving money. It's just, it's essentially what we like to call it's where banks bank at. And that's essentially what we're trying to teach you is they have the same tool available to them, but they just use it differently that we've been taught to. So plenty of people own life insurance policies. They sit around, they sit around, they say, man, this isn't doing anything. It's because really no one has been taught how to use the tool. Just like anybody can buy a piece of property, but if you don't understand how to use it, how to improve the value of it, you don't understand how the market works, then you're not going to make any money. Uh, the same thing in, in, in any business, really. So that's essentially what we're going to use to replace this bank is we're going to take a policy and use it to essentially replace the bank. And we're going to start using the our policy to make the essentially whatever we were using with the cash many times for this example. I wanted to use a, a down payment uh, on a piece of property that normally we would build up cash in somebody else's bank and they would be going through this whole system and making enormous amounts of money off of you. What if we could actually recapture almost all the money they were making off us in profits and keep it in house and still make all the money in the real estate deal that we already had, essentially having the same money do multiple things for us without really changing anything about where you're at. So I wanted to show an example of that and then uh, go into a couple more things on, on more advanced ideas of how do you, especially as it deals with real estate. And then I'll just really open up the question. So I'm going to go pull this up. And so this is a, an example that I built really just for John. Um, and uh, I, the goal of this example is really to be um, as, as simple to follow along with as possible. And so I'm going to go through that and, and really some differences that we might do in, in reality. Um, but uh, just to keep the example simple, that's what we're going to do. So here we have, we have a 40, 41 year old, uh, individual who says, you know, I want to get started doing something. I'm, I'm probably investing with John, I hope, and, and following his strategy. But essentially, he's going to actually go out and, and build a policy that he's going to use as his bank. And he puts in $15,000 a year for five years in premium into this policy to build up the cash value. And then you'll actually notice that he stops paying any money in in premium he just simply lets the policy sit. Um, and from that point, he could have kept putting money in. Um, and in fact, we, we would probably suggest you do just because we have a lot of deals that come our way that we want to invest in. Money has to sit someplace. And so he puts in 15000 a year for five years to build up the cash value of the policy. And by year five, you'll notice he's sitting on right around $68,000 at this point in cash value ready to go. And remember, a lot. Of, you'll also see that we didn't actually use this policy to do anything for five years, which is absolutely, and as Marcy and, and Tim would tell you, absolutely not the strategy at all. In fact, we're using money within the first 30 days that we get the policy. It's all <laughs> We're keeping money moving 24-7, 365 from the policy, just as we would have from a bank account. Um, and essentially, this is your new bank account. The, the reason I waited is because I wanted to say, let's just isolate what happens on just the real estate down payment that we wanted to make. OK, so in other words, if I if I had taken it out up here or up here or something like that up higher, then we'd be paying premiums in and, and we'd be taking out. Let's just let's make it as simple as possible. And so what we did is we just took out fifty thousand dollars in a policy loan from the policy. And we went out and we put that money down for, let's say, a. Um, I know, John, you had said you could probably, with your strategy, get a $500,000 property for $50,000, about 10% down. Is that is that correct? Yeah, if you were creative, sure. And it could be more, it could be less. Um, really, it could be 100 grand. We, I wanted to kind of show an example everyone can follow along with pretty easily. So what we did is instead of pulling money out of a bank account, we actually had built up our money in a different place inside of a policy. And we went out and we pulled the 50,000 out of the policy instead. 
we made the down payment on the on the property and it really is what part of the teaching that we teach and i know we didn't have a i didn't have a ton of time today just to go into everything this is you know marcy has spent a lot of time but one of the things we encourage you to do is treat your policy just like you would have treated somebody else's bank so if you're willing to go out and borrow money to go put into the property and you're willing to pay them back with interest, hey, you should actually pay yourself back with interest. And so we actually move, start putting that money back into the policy. And actually, we start, re, we, I think we did it over 20 years, a uh, 20 year amortization, I guess you could say back to you, back to your policy, which you decided that it was just a, a number I threw on the on the dartboard. Uh, but anyway, so we we actually started repaying the policy forty five hundred dollars a year, um, just like you would normally if you're wanting to build up your bank account again to go make the next real estate down payment or to do th something like that. We're doing the same exact thing here, but once again, we have our own bank inside the policy that's actually going to be growing, earning us interest and dividends even while all the money is borrowed out. So we're going to touch on that in just a minute, but that's one of the most powerful reasons to do this is you can actually leverage the cash <laughs> values inside the policy and use them for things and have the money still be in the policy growing just like you can by leveraging equity inside of a property you can do the same thing by leveraging equity in your policy and so the the policy actually continues to grow even though we borrowed most of the money out of it it's 100 percent still growing we start putting money back in 4500 dollars a year i think i did that for yeah for 20 years so you'll see we did that from year uh, six through year 25 when we've really got ourselves completely paid off. And you'll notice we're actually sitting here on $184,000 of cash value inside the policy. And if I scroll back up, what I want you to see is that we had $23,000 after we took out the 50. So we had we we got had twenty three thousand in our policy after we took out the fifty, and that actually grew to one hundred and eighty four thousand dollars. And I actually kind of have a cumulative total here at the bottom that we started with twenty three when we took over the the property. We ended with one eighty four. The forty five hundred dollars for twenty years is ninety thousand dollars. So we actually repaid ourselves. Remember, with principal and interest, just like we would have paid a bank. So we took out 50, we paid back 90, which really means we paid some interest. But you'll notice that if I, essentially what I did was I took the 184 and I subtracted out what we started with and I subtracted out what we repaid. So I took out 90 and I took out the 23 we started with. You'll actually see that we have $70,000, a little over $70,000 more than what we actually put in and what we started with that we actually have that we can write checks against inside this policy on one down payment. So this has nothing to do with what the property did for you. This essentially means that we just actually made $70,000 on top of whatever the property did above and beyond what we did. And that was just on one down payment. There's no way someone who follows John is ever going to get up to the point where they've got 180 grand just sitting around not doing anything. Hopefully we're finding new places to put it. And if we had actually continued to move the money and do other things with it, we can actually improve all the numbers by how you do it and how you repay yourself is actually the part of the power. And so essentially all we've done is change where we built up our bank at. Instead of building up a checking account or savings that we're using to invest, we built a policy, we borrowed the cash value out, we repaid it over a time period that we wanted to. We could have repaid it faster and gotten all the money back in quicker. We could have done it slower. And we could have used it as many times during here as we possibly wanted to. But just on this one simple illustration on, on one down payment, we actually walked away with an extra 70 grand. And the powerful thing, we didn't take any risk to do that. And we actually don't owe any taxes because uh, many people here might not be too aware of how life insurance is taxed, but you can actually utilize life insurance policies totally tax free. And so, I mean, this is a, extremely powerful in that no one really likes paying taxes. So we can get out of that taxable um, environment into a tax-free environment that really helps. Um, and I've got a couple of things else to share, but John, I thought I'd simply, any questions on your end up to this point? Yeah. So let me just uh, make sure I got everything straight here. 
Um, the $4,500 that we're putting back in, we're paying back that loan, and that's principal and interest, but they're paying, we're paying back that loan to the policy, which is, in a in sense, ourself, right? Exactly. And okay. we chose that number, John, exactly. We, In other words, there was no amortization schedule when we took the money out of our policy. So uh, they we, don't, you could put zero in. If we didn't have the $4,500 for that month, uh, you know, we can't uh, foreclose on ourselves or we can't uh, send a bad credit report in on ourselves. I mean, I guess we could. Right. That, that'd be very <laughs> Pretty you know foolish. I mean? yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, you know what I mean? Essentially, you're, yep. You're getting your credit report and Heather just put in a bad, you know, I don't know. Anyway. Exactly. So, okay, let me ask you this. So, you know, that's arbitrary, that $4,500, but I see the importance of paying that back. Could you, instead of the first five years at 15,000, could you just take 75,000 and front load a policy and then use it 30 days down the line instead of five years? Yeah, definitely. Yep, 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 definitely. And so you, you can do, you can move so much quicker than what we showed you. As I said, this was trying to make it the ultimate in simplicity. Um, was really the main goal for for this example, and and really so, and I chose fifteen thousand dollars over a period of time just so just to let people know you don't have to be wealthy uh, by any stretch to actually be able to take advantage of it. Uh, you can yeah. you can be you can be in other words, if you had seventy five grand available, if you had five hundred thousand dollars available, if you had the more money you have, the quicker you can get something like this off the ground. The quicker you can start financing things. But even if you don't, right at this moment. It really doesn't. It's not like it's only a tool for the wealthy. And we have people start um, really small, five thousand dollars a year, um, and and all the way up to our, our largest clients putting in two million in premium every year. Um, so we have all across the spectrum. Um, but you're exactly right. We don't. We didn't need to wait five years to use it. First off, we could have used it in day one, or we could have front loaded it right away and uh, used it, a, a large sum of it. Let me ask you this, uh, because we invest in outside entities, uh, you know, would we be able to, um, you know, I'm buying a, a 20 unit apartment building and I'm using an LLC to buy that. Uh, does this policy have to be taken out in an LLC or individually, or do I have to buy that apartment building individually? Uh, kind of thing. Is there any idea on how that mechanism would work? That's, a, that's a, actually a great, a great question. You would most of the time you actually want the policy to be owned individually um, by yourself. And you actually, this is one of the things I even, I think I even mentioned to you in one of the bullet points we were going to cover. And that's actually just a little bit is we would even suggest showing you how you can essentially be um, truly a bank, truly a finance company and lend money to your LLC. And uh, essentially what you've done, and I can actually show that. I'll just pull up another white sheet. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Essentially, there will be three parts. This will kind of be how the money moves. So you'll have your, your, your money inside the policy. And so as what you do is we, let's say we lend the $50,000 from our policy and it just hits our personal bank account. Just, just you personally, you can actually make a loan to your LLC, or you can just make a, a capital contribution. Um, but the reason you might want to do it as a loan is because as this LLC pays pays it back, you can treat it like a loan, and you can say charge your LLC ten percent interest, and they could pay you back, you know, five thousand dollars per year interest only. The LLC, and what is this five thousand dollars to the LLC now that it's interest? Tax write off. It's a tax write off. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were okay. Gotcha. You get you know what I'm saying? I thought you were making a statement, not a question. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. In because other words, it's, interest it's on a loan that's tax write off, right? Exactly. So the LLC is a, is a business expense. Interest qualifies for that, no, no matter who the lender is. You yeah, could actually, so and so you could actually. This can become your own finance company. Uh, we actually show people how they can actually, especially depend. You starting out, you won't need to open up your own company. 
to be your bank. But many times, especially as you get more and more properties and you're blending a lot more money, we would even suggest potentially having this middleman be a true company that's really your finance company who has liens on all your properties, just like a bank would if they had lent the money. And your your property, your the LLCs that own your properties would pay that company interest and it would be 100% write-off to the to the um to the LLC, but yet you still get to keep all the money. So it's a little bit, of, you can still get the interest write off that we like <laughs> when dealing with the bank, but we don't have to have the interest expense be gone like we used to. In fact, if we went back to the example, not only did we get back all the principal and interest that we repay to the policy, which we could have written off, remember? So that, remember we borrowed 50, I can just go back to, it. we borrowed 50 out from the policy we repaid with 90 that means there was forty thousand dollars of interest that we paid that not only did we recapture in the policy we have it all back plus an extra 70 grand but we were able to write this off of our taxes so we actually recaptured it tax-free because inside a life insurance policy there's it, it grows tax-free but we're able to take it out of our taxable income that year over that time frame so that would just bump up all the numbers even further for what it really means um, if we could actually get the write-off. So that was one of the things I actually wanted to share as especially in real estate investing, we have a lot of people who do it um, as clients, but essentially we not only got to make a lot of 70 grand extra on, just, on this just one small example, um, but we were able to write off an extra 40 grand that we wouldn't have if we just made the down payment in cash. Because yeah, whenever- there's as, another, Go ahead, sorry. I was gonna say, you know, if you monetize that benefit of the write-off on the LLC, which is a flow-through entity, and you're not paying taxes on that forty grand, you know whatever tax bracket, because a, a flow-through entity, that income and or loss is going to flow to the owner of that LLC. Let's call it an individual, and if that individual is just for sake of math, say in the fifty percent tax bracket, you, you That's see what I mean? Twenty grand, yeah just in his pocket. And that's only on one. Um, the, yeah. the extremely powerful thing is this. So every loan that you get, I assume, John, is, is an amortized loan from a bank, right? Which means right. that over time, you're building your principal, your equity, and you're reducing the loan, which whenever you're doing that the traditional way, as you reduce the loan, you reduce the interest expense, which means that your taxes go up correspondingly. So as you reduce the loan down, the interest payment gets lower and lower and lower and lower, which is a good thing we, for the most part because we don't actually like paying interest necessarily. We'd rather just pocket the money. Uh, but so the, does the tax write-off come with it? Well, if you could essentially, instead of just amortizing the loan down um, and paying it off to the bank, what if you had your own finance company that was you know, making all these deals as you're doing with down payment, but over time, just as that loan is going down, you actually put a lien on the property um, from your own finance company for what you used to have at the bank. And so you can actually continue to write off the interest that you've always, you can essentially keep an interest only loan forever. But as the bank's balance decreases, the balance back to your company your finance company, or just you personally, you don't actually need a finance company for it to work, but the, the interest back to you could increase as the banks decreases. And so you can maintain the interest right off um, forever, actually, but yet still get the other third party bank out of the picture and the interest that we're losing can be out the door, but we can still maintain the tax write off. And so that is, that's something we do every day. And that's some, you know, really powerful over time because people are so desperate to get out of debt and I'm one of them. I don't really necessarily like holding uh, bank loans unless they're, you know, in something that's making me profitable, but I don't want them because I don't like losing the interest just for having their money. So I'd like to take it over all inside my policy um, and have a hundred percent of the loan from me so I can recapture all the interest. Well, th then I'd lose all the tax write-offs for the interest. So there's a way you can actually manage it to where you can not only write this extra 40 grand off, but you could have actually repaid the 40,000. You could have actually, instead of paying $4,500 over 20 years, you could have just made this on an interest only loan um, and just continued to write it off. Cause it's all your money. In other words, you there's, this was just a simple example, John, as I've said so many times, I'm not trying to, 
make people um, make, make people <laughs> experts on the subject today, but just simply let them know what's actually going on here that you can do by just thinking outside the box a bit. And so, any, any other questions, John? Am I am I on the right track at least? Yeah, you're on the right track. I just feel okay. like I. I feel like I should have started investing when I was four. <laughs> well, if you can learn how to get the time machine, Bill, I know you're working on it, then maybe you can go back. Yeah, right. I am uh, working on that. Okay, good. <laughs> so, you know, okay, very good. So another question, how long, like from start to finish, does it take to set up a policy? I mean, someone may have money that is not, you know, and please talk to your tax professionals like Marcy here uh, on with us. But, you you know, you want to talk to them about that. But how long does it take to set up from start to finish? And if I was looking at buying a building in, um, what is it, January? If I was looking to buy a building in March using this strategy, is that possible? It is possible for March. Normally you're looking... Uh, because for, for those of you who have never opened a life insurance policy before, first off, we do it very differently. Uh, most people are doing life insurance for a death benefit. And unfortunately, that means most of your money just goes to buy the death benefit. The key is kind of like a teeter-totter, if I can draw that on the screen here. If you weigh a death benefit and you want to get a high death benefit, you'll have really low cash. So essentially, you want to reverse that and get and actually build a policy with the lowest death benefit possible and the highest cash value possible in order for this to banking thing to work. Because we're not so helping you solve for a death benefit. We're not really insurance advisors. You know, I'm, I'm not uh, I, I can't tell you how much insurance you need. <laughs> all I know is this banking strategy is all is all we do. And so we, we're hopefully uh, the whole goal is getting the cash. Out. So anyway, but if you haven't ever purchased a life insurance policy, you actually still need to go through the same rigmarole, which is you have to take an application. And normally there's a, an exam to be a physical exam, like a physical to be done. The insurance company sends somebody out. And that's why the process can normally take four to six weeks, John, from start to finish. So if you're looking at, to get something by March, it can definitely happen, but you'd want to, you know, get going with this sooner rather than later if that was your timeline but normally it's about four to six weeks from start to finish what about, what about kevin uh Kruska, who's on the line uh it, it just asked a great question what about the dividends that are paid by the life insurance company uh can you talk about that and how i mean that is this another unraveling of a benefit that we haven't talked about yet well, it actually is, is all kind of encompassed on the screen here. So you'll notice uh, this cash value that's growing. Let me erase some things and make it a little bit clearer. You'll notice by the, you know, by the time we repaid ourselves for our own loan, and we did that over 20 years, we, we repaid ourselves for our own loan. We had $184,000 of cash value. The reason it grew by so much is really because, and that's part of the system, and there's so much that we haven't gone into in the basics. Uh, of why this works. We, we're, I'm really showing you kind of how it works, but we haven't really delved into the why. One of them is the dividends that essentially, why can an insurance policy grow by four to 5% every year in the same interest rate environment that the banks are paying zero? It doesn't seem to compute. In fact, banks and insurance companies are really in the same business. All they do is they take other people's money and they make loans with them. That's all they do. The only difference between the two is who gets all the profits at the end of the year. And that's exactly right. So essentially, as soon as you buy a policy, you only want to get one from a mutual company. Mutual meaning you obtain ownership in the company and thus you, you obtain a profit, divisible profit, um, essentially is what you want to do. So anyway, you'll notice that, John, you'll see what we're not even actually using the policy, but our cash value continues to continues to increase. Even if we don't, if we, we're just letting the money sit. It would increase faster if you used it and knew how to use it like we're teaching. But even if we just let it sit there, you'll notice we're earning, you know, by by the by the time that the, the deal is done, almost nine thousand dollars a year tax free that year uh, with no risk uh, inside the policy that most of that's coming because of the dividends that the, the insurance company pays. Not all of it, though, because they actually have two parts. They actually guarantee it's going to grow every year. And anything above the guarantee, they pay out in a dividend. 
And so they, this, in other words, I'm saying I would, it actually is included with what we're sharing here. Um, um, if that makes sense. Okay. Cool. I thought you were going to surprise us with some, you know, another secret. Yeah. <laughs> that's the reason is essentially that's the reason the policy is growing like this Perfect. is because of the dividends, the interest in dividends, the policy earns itself. Got it. So yeah. Yep. Yep. Does this, uh, okay. So, um, Perfect. Those are my questions. Guys, uh, anybody out uh, there have more questions? Uh, you can just put them in right in the chat line. Uh, if you really wanted to speak, I can unmute your phone. Uh, just let me know. Um, so how, for our group then, what, if somebody has some questions or somebody has, um, you know, uh, want to take this thing to the next level, what are the steps from here? One sec. I'm just trying to, I think I can go to chat. Okay, there we go. I'm in chat. Okay. There we go. Can you repeat that question? I was just trying to get to where I could see the chat yeah. window in case people were talk, were chatting. If our people on the phone right now want to say, hey, you know, I'd like to learn more about that, or I want to get my stuff set up right now because I, I see the benefit in this, which I do. Uh, what do we do? Like, what's the next step? Who do we get a hold of? How does that work? Well, you can probably actually, and Marcy, I don't, Tim, I, Marcy, I can't see you guys anymore. All I can see is my screen, but there we go. I think they just put in the chat window. Uh, Marcy, it. you can actually reach out to her directly because she would would then probably set up a time. We'd probably do a joint call with her, Marcy and me, because Marcy actually wants to get involved with how to teach people this as well. So she wants to uh, be the point of contact for it. So you can actually contact Marcy directly. You know, she already got started and, and can show you exactly what she's doing. And, um, Marcy, and, and her con her contact info was just in the chat window now as well. She put her, it looks like she put her phone number and her email and into Marcy, the chat window. Just so that everybody knows, you're licensed, you're a licensed insurance agent, correct? I'm a licensed insurance agent, yeah. Okay. And many states if if somebody is not in a state that i'm licensed then i get licensed and i do work through living well where nate is got it so, what about uh, anybody guys anybody else uh, have a question i mean this is this is really great i what i'm i'm gonna do is sit with a whiteboard now that i have seen what you did nate not that tim you didn't explain it well but now this is the second time that I'm hearing this. Actually, third, because Tim, I think I was the original one that said, asked you guys if you had heard about this. And the last thing that I would say to everybody, can you hear me? Very the faint. Thing, the last thing that I would say to everybody is when Nate was sharing just a couple minutes ago about jumping through bank hoops, Tim and I um, have several different complexes now and we had to jump through so many hoops for the bank um our last uh, 11 unit apartment complex we got to the friday before closing and the bank wanted to change the 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 whole um, i want to say uh terms of the loan on us so with this when you're your own bank you don't have to ask the banker and you don't have to change the terms on friday you get to ask yourself we're getting we're getting a question, uh, Nate or Tim or, or uh, Marcy. Uh, does it matter if a person is Canadian or from Canada? It actually does not. Um, they can actually do it in Canada as well, um, and you can even use. Uh, essentially, there's there's just a little bit more that you have to jump through to get it done. Just at the very very beginning. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you're from Canada. You can actually make this happen in Canada. Um, but to use a U.S. company, mainly you have to have some sort of tie to the U.S. And many times that is you need to bank with a bank, a, a traditional bank that has a branch in the United States. Got That's it. essentially the the limit. They've got to be able to pull money from a bank that has a branch in the United States. So if you have if that is something you can do, it doesn't even have to be a, 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 a U.S. bank, really. It just has to be able to have a branch here and then you can uh, do it from Canada. Perfect. Perfect. Well, is there? Go ahead, Tim. I was just going to say, as Nate had that, uh, Nate, can you put that um, that uh, illustration back up? Yeah, I can go back and share. Let me see. Everybody, look at something. As Nate said, is we would never let this money just sit. 
Sitting money makes no money. But if you look at this chart that Nate has up there, we're taking money out in year five. But if you look, um, even though we're paying back $4,500 a, uh, a year, um, by the end of year 10, we have another 50,000 we could pull out. By the year, by the end of year, um, uh, um, you know, then down in year 18, yeah, there's another 100,000 that could be pulled out. You, you're using the same $50,000 over and over and over and over again, and you've only put in the original amount. Um, and yet you, you're still growing, and it's still growing. By year 25, there's $184,000 in there. That could buy you almost four buildings at that point, and it's still growing after that. And that growth doesn't stop just because we took that money out. And that's what Nate was trying to say is, uh, this is what's different you know, um, about what the wealthy do. The wealthy people never give up their money, ever. And you may oh. think that that's strange, and you don't even know how that works, but the bottom line is this is the one of the ways they do it. And major corporations do this as well. I was just reading yep. actually John Alberto's book. You remember Alberto from uh, Pirates? Um, and uh, I just uh, was completing reading his book. And he talked about uh, out of the top 100 uh, corporations in the United States, that the vast majority of them are using this to recoup all of the money that they use to pay employees with. And uh, banks use it to recap and to protect themselves. Um, but it's it's pretty powerful when you find out what that upper echelon in, in the uh, in the economy is really doing with their money. Is they don't turn loose of it ever. You spend fifty thousand on a building, and until you can refinance it, you can't pull that money back out, and it's no longer growing for you except in the asset. What we've just shown you today, not only is the asset you purchased growing. And using John's techniques, it's going to grow significantly. Uh, we just did one of these, and we had 200% growth in the first 12 months. Um, but the 50000 you put into the policy has been growing in dividends and interest, guaranteed, um, the whole time it sat there, even though you used the money. And you just can't do that anywhere but in a tool like this. Yeah, I think it's great. And, and just so that everybody knows, because maybe there's a question here, the forty five hundred dollars that you're paying back, that can come from your property. Yep. That can come from the efforts of other people going to their nine to five to cut you the most important check of the month to pay you the forty five hundred dollars to fund pay back yourself. Do you see? I mean it's like anyway, I you know I Well what I wanted to just kind of mention, you're exactly right, is and, and that's what we're trying to say is even even the, the year after we t really took the loan out, you'll notice we put the forty five hundred dollars in, but the policy itself grew by by fifty five hundred dollars. So you essentially turned forty five hundred of rent into fifty five hundred bucks with just simply changing where the where the money was flowing to when the money came in. Oh, and awesome. that's extremely powerful. So that's really what we're trying to t teach. This is not an investment. The policy is not the investment. The real estate is. The policy is the banking tool that just simply complements whatever else you're doing. So you essentially turn $4,500 in rent checks into $5,500 by just having it flow through the policy instead of a, a bank. And we could just walk over and pull that money out tax-free the next day and essentially use money that we didn't work for and that we don't have to claim, but we get to use it uh, just like we normally would have uh, if we had it with the bank. So you're exactly right. This was actually my idea was let's just have the rents repay this 4,500. And honestly, John, if you make a $50,000 down payment, you're going to be getting more in rents than 4,500 bucks a year. So you could have the whole shebang go through there and uh, increase this even drastically. This was just, you know, kind of a low number what I thought in my mind. Sure. How much property could you buy? Well, let me, let me, Tim, we can barely hear you, bud. Imagine for a moment how much more real estate you could buy if you could recapture all the principal and interest you paid on every car you ever bought, on, every, on your mortgage, your home mortgage, on all your properties that you purchased, on your property taxes, on your federal income tax. You can do this with every one of those things. And as Nate said, he just, just scratching the surface here, but um, we found that when we don't have to pay as much taxes 
And when we can recapture all the interest and principal from everything we're doing, um, coming up with money for real estate becomes a lot easier. It, yeah, it does. And that was really the goal of this was just to show people a little bit about it. But as as uh, Tim said, it, we, I, we, I, I do, and I'm sure Marcy and Tim are doing this as well, essentially do this with everything. Yeah. So if it works with just this one down payment on one property, it can work to go finance the cars. You can pay mortgages. You can go on vacation. You can do weddings. You can pay your federal income tax, your property tax. Everything can flow to and from a policy instead of a bank, and you'll profit just like you see here simply by changing where you're banking at. That's, of course, why big banks buy this stuff like crazy. They understand how it works. We've just been really tricked, and, and this is something that just blows my mind. That of every whole life insurance policy that's ever been written, only about 2% of them have loans against them, which means everybody is buying these policies and just letting them sit. No one's showed them how to use it. And that's just the missing piece of the puzzle. It's a shame that someone can have one of these and not realize what they're missing out on and not really see it for its truest potential. And so that's really what we're trying to share with, uh, with people here. So Nate, let me ask you, should uh, we do a part two? Is there a next level of this stuff you can talk about and teach about on uh, this webinar? Oh, sure. And, and as especially for the people who are here already, um, we can build on this foundation and go deeper into why this works and what yep. else it can work for. Um, well, we could definitely do a part two and go way deeper than this now that we've kind of got a little bit of the foundation set and people at least know what, what we're talking about. Let's do, uh, can we do next Monday at the same time, just so we're at the state? I told everybody I was bringing the fire in 2017. This is a great first webinar here. Awesome. Okay, good. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to check my schedule and let you know, John, if I can make it on, uh, on next, next Monday. It's 4 p.m. Central, right? Yep. I actually have an appointment then on the end at 4.30. Uh, John, I don't know if that would be okay to, to, bump it back a little bit but what about in two weeks uh, two weeks that would be the the uh what is that the 30th that's wide open perfect let's get you down for okay. the 30th. we'll get everybody back on we'll do a part two uh i will uh this recording by the way uh, will be on the back side of the site so everybody can see that and uh Guys, I can't thank you enough. This is a just a nugget of great information that uh, you know makes our group different than anybody else. Uh, so, Nate, I appreciate you, and uh, Tim and Marcy, I appreciate you, of course, as well. So, uh, do you guys want to say anything in closing? I just want to thank everybody and thank Nate so much for being on the call and. As he was saying before, I've been in the insurance industry for 17 years. I had two cash value policies. I always paid my loan back. I had no idea this is how you could use the product. That's awesome. You're in the, you're in the same boat with 98% with of the population. There's only a, a few people who actually know what they're doing with it, and they do it really well. Um, and that's the biggest issue. Why people haven't heard of it is because we've all been talking to people like Marcy. And, uh, you know, that's the, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, John, thank you so much for having me on here. I look forward to coming back in, in two weeks and I hope we'll go in a bit deeper than we did today. Okay. Thanks so much, Nate. We will talk to everyone in two weeks on this subject in one more week on, uh, our webinar. So we're not skipping that. We're just, uh, not talking about this subject, but how great. Thanks so much, Nate, Tim, Marcy. Thank you. And we'll talk to everybody real soon. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks, John. Bye-bye.